Welcome to Tmux. Tmux is a terminal multiplexer, enables a number of terminals to be created, accessed, and controlled from a single screen. And I frequently use it on this channel when I've done a lot of my tutorials or just talking about things like when I'm doing speed tests because I want to be able to log into more than one server at once to do speed tests or network tests or any network engineering. And the question comes up all the time, how did you split the screen? The answer is Tmux, but that doesn't really explain how to use it. So I figured I'd do a video on how to get started with Tmux. I'm gonna show you the basics, and I really only use it for the basics, uh, but those basics are really powerful and it's a great tool. Uh, before we dive into the content here, if you can take a second to check out the affiliates over here we have on our channel and also link down below in this YouTube channel. This does help out uh, this company and me producing content when you use some of these affiliates and some of them get you some great deals, including like the folks at Texas Pride Direct have an offer code to get you 10% off and the free trial you can get with the folks over at IT Pro TV. We also have links to iNode, DigitalOcean, Google Fi, and Amazon affiliate links. Like I said, all this to help out the channel, or you can just hire us if you have some project you want to help us with, or you need us to help you with said that wrong, but hey, why not? We can all work together. And uh, there's a hiatus at the top over here. And back to the content. So a couple of things we're gonna talk about is Tmux, the Tmux cheat sheet, and of course my command prompt. Someone will say, Tom, your command prompt doesn't look like my default load of, you know, insert Linux distribution here. That is correct. This is a, a custom command prompt that I have, I'll show right here, and that is available on GitHub. And I bring this up related to Tmux because I did customize my Tmux config as well. So the Tmux config actually I just updated it today to fix the little network show at the bottom. I updated it, I changed it, but I do not in my Tmux change the default key bindings because Tmux being that it manages the window, it's like a window manager for the shell, I make sure to leave them at default. And the reason why is sometimes I have to work on other people's computers who have Tmux installed and they have not customized it, which is fine. But if you start customizing the default keys, which you're gonna see control B used a lot, that's like how you kick off an action inside of there, and someone chooses a different command set, my fingers remember to type control B at the beginning, so I do leave that at default. But I do turn on mouse support because it makes it a lot easier. And generally speaking, computers now we have a mouse handy. Now, mouse support is an add-on, even if you don't have a mouse attached to the computer, you're uh, logging into, it doesn't really matter. It's only an add-on and if you have a mouse, that function becomes available. It doesn't, it's not a necessity. Anyways, what is Tmux in general? All right, so besides the, being a window manager, an easy way to split windows, uh, it's just a really great way to manage sessions when you're dealing with things like uh, multiple servers, multiple computers, and maybe waiting for things to complete. It's a nice session manager as well for things like that. I'm gonna first talk about screen key. Screen key and slop are tools I have, and what they do is they make this happen. You'll see things typing down here. I did this on purpose because when you're running Tmux, which will actually exit out of Tmux, whoops. Make sure I close all the windows I had open. So now cleared completely out of Tmux, and it's important to see the commands I'm using because it's a lot of different keyboard shortcuts. So right here, it's just default load of Tmux, which looks just like my Bash shell, which may not look that much different to you, but you notice down here at the bottom, it has our local IP address, the time, um, and the date, and that we're using the Bash shell. So we're gonna hit Control B and a quote, and now we have two windows. And this is where the mouse support comes in handy to be able to switch between these two windows. So let's run something at the top window, and we'll run something on the bottom window. So, when you're here, I can use the mouse to select which one of these windows is active or live. So wherever, which one is live, it puts a little bar there, and then I can clear this one as well. How do you do it without the mouse though? So I don't usually use the mouse from selecting windows because the handy way to do it is Control B, which is always what you start your commands with. And then Control B, let go of Control B, and hit down arrow. So cow say, Bottom Tmux, there we go. So we have something in the screen. Control B, up arrow. See, top Tmux. So now we have something in the top and we can just switch between them. Control B, up. Now, if you hold, if you hit Control B, then quickly hit the arrows up and down, you can start resizing these windows or with the mouse support, 
you can drag them around too, which is really handy. Now that was a vertical split of the windows, or I'm sorry, a horizontal split. What about if we want to split the windows vertically? Control B, percent. And all these are on the cheat sheet. Now this is one of the things I'm going to mention. These commands seem weird, and I, I don't know the reason why they chose like Control B quote or Control B percent to split them horizontally or vertically. I just know they did. Therefore, once you have all these committed to memory, uh, this is why I say if you're changing the defaults, and some people do because they don't like those choices, uh, you get confused when you start using someone else's session. Up to you, but that's one of the reasons I'm doing this at the default. So now if you want to go left to right, we do this, and now we're in this pane. And control B over here, and now we're in this one. But what about if we split it both ways? What if we did this like that? Now, how do we get there? Well, control B over always goes over here, and control B over here, then we may have to go control B up arrow. It's going to go between them depending on how it perceived that, or once again, clicking in each one of them. So each one of these panes is able to run another process. It's, you know, like I said, you can put HTOP back in this one here, and then we can do something over here. Now this is particularly handy for like watching a log file as things are happening. So maybe I wanna run some utility, uh, I'm trying to diagnose it over here, but I want the log files to be rolling over here like while I restart uh, SSH server or restart Apache, and then you maybe want to watch the log files roll by over here, and you're doing it all in one session. This is one of the use cases I have, or the other use case I have is I want to go to another server. So let's go to SSH root at 192.168.3.4. I can be in my FreeNAS, and I can run iperf on my FreeNAS, and uh, we'll set it up as a server. Then we can go over here, then we can go iperf3-client, wine2168.3.4. So now I'm able to be on my local computer over here on the right, have my free NAS box here, and I left HTOP over here so I can kind of see what's going on and I can get that dual view of something. Or I can, like I said, pull up log files. These are some of the use cases I have all the time for it. And we can exit out of this, and away we go. Now the other thing that can be done, so we kick off some process to run in here, we'll run this one here, run uh, top here, and uh, let's pull, let's do this, uh, curl, this actually will pull the weather up over in here, and we'll slide it over a little bit, there we go, now it looks right, if you didn't know uh, WTTDR.IN, you can uh, curl that right there and it will give you the weather. So all this is up and running, let's detach from it. Control B, detach. I have released and now I can use um, my, I can close the shell even, it doesn't really matter. So now we've closed it. So what happened, is all that running in the background somewhere? Actually it is. That session is kept alive by Tmux. So if we go over here and we do Tmux A for attach, right back where we left off. Now, obviously it's not gonna survive a reboot of my computer because it's running on this computer, but let's talk about when it's not running. So we'll exit, exit, and you'll understand in a second why this is important down here. So uh, 192.168.3.9, that's my local computer address. Now we're gonna go ahead and SSH over to my forums. <clears throat> so we're logged into foreign ser forums server. So let's kick off a Tmux session. All right, yes, you can see this local public IP. This is the forum's public IP address. So I'm logged in and I don't know, let's try to run one of the reports. So LS, I have some Go Access. I think I've covered this in our video. This Go Access report takes a while to run. And while I just kick that off to run, we'll go down here and we'll kick off HTOP. And you can see it's, it's gonna pin the process a little while running and this will take a while, but I need that report because I wanna know some of the log files and this is parsing all those log files. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control B, D for detach. And we'll even exit off the server. So now we've uh, forums at Lawrence systems closed, all right? So let's go back into the forums and we do Tmux A, still running. Uh, and this is great. Now, what about if the power went out on my computer? Like we just randomly and harshly disconnect the network and drop this connection right here. Well, then what? Close terminal, got the warning. All right, so let's go back over here. And we were SSH'd in, then we were 
tmux den. So let's go back in SSH forums. We're back into the forum server. I mean, tmux. Hey, well, good news is the report completed, but you can see the session is right where I left it. And that's an important aspect of this. So whenever I go, and especially when I have to rebuild the forums, places I use tmux a lot, like from a business standpoint, uh, it is all done in Docker. And it, I do a git poll and get the latest Docker image, and it takes a little while and it compiles. And I don't want any of that output to get lost in case there was an error. So frequently, without even opening up any more panes, I start tmux. I start the update process, which is actually, I put a little shell script together for that. This is the discourse upgrade process. When I kick this off, it's going to take a while. And I don't want to risk if a connection gets lost on my computer, or if I do this, uh, for example, when I'm at home, I kick it off at home, then I disconnect the session. I come here to the office. I reattach that session and say, okay, what's the status of it? Is it done updating? Or was there some error message left on the screen that I can see? This is where TMUX is really, really helpful. And also why I have this local IP displayed down here so I can remember what session you're on. Because the other thing about TMUX where things can get confusing is that's TMUX on there. So we're going to close the forums. We're going to fire up TMUX locally here. And we'll put a bottom pane and we'll put a top pane and then it'll SSH back into the forums. So now I'm on the forum server. And if we, what if we reattach on the forum server? Well, this is referred to as nesting tmux. So now we have tmux running inside of tmux and it'll work. But this is also handy to have this little bottom. So I know locally I have my own tmux server. So if I do control B split, it overrides, there's ways to go and override the override, but it overrode and I'm actually on this computer here. That control B gets caught by the first session of TMUX, not the second one. So that's just something to note, you can nest it, um, but I don't necessarily recommend it and that's more advanced use case, but it does recognize typing exit, exit, and we can close all those sessions and now we're only back to my local computer over here. Now the other reason I mentioned mouse support is for the scroll back effect. What I mean by that is being able to type things like, well, to go D message, for example. And you're used to probably grabbing the scroll bar and going up, but you probably notice there's not a scroll bar. So let's just show you the difference real quick. So if we exit Tmux, we do D, mess, D message here. The bash window says, oh, okay, no problem, here's a scroll bar. It doesn't work that way in Tmux though. Tmux does have a buffer. It didn't go to dev null, it went somewhere. Uh, and the nice thing about having mouse support enabled, I just scroll back with the mouse wheel real quick. And I'm like, oh, that's what I was looking for, this thing right here. Then part of the mouse support, we're gonna go ahead here. And I'm like, there's that weird error message. And I'm holding the shift key to do this because this works different than the shift key. There's a couple different ways to do it. That's not the way to do it. So we actually wanna scroll back, find that thing you're looking for and go, all right, what is it? What's this OSMP oh, boot? What does that mean? So I'm holding the shift key, copy. And then from there, as we all know, we just kind of go through and uh, paste and figure out what those messages mean, whatever they are. But you can kind of get the idea. Now where this becomes really, really handy and we're gonna split it a little different here. So clear SSH into the lab server. Oh, 3.134. So the top window is the lab server and the bottom window is my computer, but I want to actually log in the lab server again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So now I'm on the lab server here. Now maybe we're gonna go over here to slash var log. All right, uh, what do we got here? Syslog, dpackage log, maybe we'll look at the SSH log, or actually authorization log. So if we cat auth log, right? So there's the auth log, and we, we wanna actually go a step further and watch it. And I've used this tool before, LNAV, LNAV auth log, all right. So LNAV will actually real-time watch things. We're just gonna exit real quick remove session, start session. And this is where tmux becomes a really handy tool because you maybe want to watch some log file and you want to do something on that server and you don't want to have to have, you know, two different windows open or things like that. Maybe you want to split the windows. As a matter of fact, you can even, while this is live, control B and we'll split it this way. It'll just move this over here. And now I have my local computer, but let's SSH back into that lab. 
8.3.134. And we're watching it over here, exiting. So you're watching the logs over in this corner. You can see how this can be really handy to do it, and especially uh, when I'm setting up something that I want to do a bunch of testing. Now I want to go, I want to do this later. So control B, D, but I want to get back to it. I want those sessions still alive because they're working on something. I can just tmux A and attach to it. But what, and this is where things get a little bit more advanced. So this is, um, we'll go ahead and attach all three of these. So I have three sessions all attached to one server in this particular TMUX session. We're gonna go ahead and hit Control B, D for disconnect. We're just gonna fire up another TMUX. All right, and uh, this is on my local computer. Cow say, um, some new session. And so we have more things on there, why not? do the curl weather thing again. So split here, move it up a bit like that. And then we'll type curl, put the weather in. All right, so I got the weather displayed on this TMUX session. Now let's go ahead and control B, D for disconnect, TMUX LS. Now there are two sessions. Now this is where it gets kind of cool. If you do TMUX A, A, it's attached to the other session, but if we hit Control B S, we have a session manager. And for every version, or every, I'm not version, but every extra instance of TMUX you have, now you have, you can switch back and forth. Control B this session or this session. And these are all covered in a cheat sheet, what I'm doing right here. So you can even just move to previous sessions, reattach them, rename the sessions. Uh, it's really nice. LS was listing them from the command line when you're not inside of TMUX. Once you're in TMUX, it's aware of all the other TMUX sessions you spawned on your computer. So you can uh, get rid of them. It also allows the options to detach and move them. So this is actually just a really neat feature in TMUX, the fact that it's self-aware of all the other TMUXs that you have running on your system and can keep track of them all. And when I exit out of this one, and kill it. Now we're back over here. It actually kills TMUX, but didn't, it only killed that session of TMUX. I can reattach to this session now. It's the only session live, so A only goes to this one. So it kind of gets you idea. It's, it, it sounds complicated at first, but once you're used to using it, it becomes a very handy tool for parsing out things, watching stuff that's happening, especially when you start doing stuff like checking log files. Having this ability to let me clear this and we'll exit out completely. So no more TMUX sessions now. And we go to root at 192.168.3.134. Clear, I just like to clear it to have it when I log into servers. Now it's running TMUX. This bottom says what IP address I'm on. I know that's the lab server IP address and let's split the windows. Just using the split commands here. So now I have four windows running in here and maybe we want different things running in each one of these. So we'll have, this is where things get fun when you're doing some real heavy troubleshooting for a client and we'll do LNAV, whoops. Uh, the syslog, S. Then we'll go CD slash var log. Actually we'll just run LNAV natively here. So it's gonna pull something different. When you're watching multiple log files, that's when things get fun. Slash uh, var, whoops, log. Uh, what are we gonna to go to here? This one would be maybe auth log. So we can watch the SSH things in. And I have all these set up. And let's say these are you know, real specific ways I wanted it and I'm doing something with this box. Now I may want to control B, disconnect, exit, and this is kind of the same similar way like how I use the forums. I go back into that server. I can see my TMUX doing LS. There's that one session running. We'll go ahead and just attach to it. It's right where I left off. This happens frequently when you're trying to log something for a server. I just want the screen output on there all the time like this, especially if I have a couple log files or sometimes even more, and I've created some commands that are watching for something to happen when you're troubleshooting. It's really nice to leave this open on the server so you can just go back to it and just reattach to these sessions. Now the last thing I'm going to show you here that is kind of cool about TMUX. So besides all the other cool features, I have one, two, three, four panes all in the same place essentially. So how do we get to some of the other stuff like switching um, options inside of TMUX? Well, there's a whole command line system and we'll just cover it real quick through the cheat sheet. 
This allows you to get to this command, swap windows and things like that. Uh, where's the other one we're going to use? Synchronize panes and then mode keys for when you want to be in copy mode and things like that. I like using the mouse because I think it's easier, but these are options. There's also like just general option commands. And this is how you get to those options, like control B colon. And then you set the option there. So let's go ahead and we're going to hit control B colon. And this is a neat option. I really like it. Set W. Set W synchronize panes on spelled properly. Now all the panes are in sync with each other. So LS does the same on all of them. We'll bring them all to the same directory. Type clear. It's going to C L E A R. E A R. <laughs> Equal typo in all four panes all at the same time. And this is a neat way to be able to take servers and it doesn't all even have to be the same one. You can SSH to them because it's controlling it at the pane level. Maybe you're uh, going in four different servers and you want to run the same command. Ansible is a better way to do mass commands and things like that. I have a couple tutorials on Ansible on my channel as well. But for a quick way to do it and just say, I want to run this same command on these couple servers to get like a package installed. This is a quick and easy way to do it. Yes, I station each one of the servers and we can then quickly add the same thing to each of them. And simultaneously, um, maybe we have too many windows open. If we type exit, it exited on all the panes at once. And now we're back to my local computer. And uh, do I have any TMUX sessions? Nope, no sessions running, so we'll start a new one. And we're back to running TMUX on my local computer here. So print this cheat sheet out. This is what helped me get started in TMUX, and it becomes kind of muscle memory for the most part. I had to stop and think to do this video, like to some of the commands, but that's also why I put them at the bottom. But you just got to remember Control B to get a lot of things kicked off. Um, these are like the rename sessions, control BD. Control BD and control BA are the two I learn a lot. So uh, control B like to switch a session uh, or detach from a session and control B uh, A to attach. I'm sorry, Tmux A to attach and control B D to detach. Just Tmux A, said it wrong. You don't need to control, you're just typing Tmux A uh, to get it back on there. But control B S will cycle between many sessions you have of Tmux up and running like I showed earlier. So there's a lot to it, uh, but you don't have to be too intimidated. If you just want the basics of uh, splitting the screen and being able to log in a couple different places, that is easy to do with just splitting the screens with those couple basic commands. And it's actually what I use it for more than anything else, but you can quickly become a power user. Also, uh, this has searches on here too, so you can uh, find different stuff. I thought it was kind of kind of neat, but either way, just uh, having a copy of this is really handy to kind of learn how some of it works. You can dive way further into Tmux and start playing with it. It's a really powerful tool, and a lot of my friends who are developers in Linux have been using it for a long time. That's how I got intro to it, and I uh, figured I want to share it more. It's it's a great tool, and uh, go out and apt get install it if you're on Debian or any other uh, systems that it's supported on. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.